So Steve, um, as an archaeologist you have to always be looking at the ground mm -hmm. and you never know what you might find right. if you keep your eyes peeled. So okay. I think if we walk along here just a little bit, because I'm getting a sense, you look at the other bits of material culture lying around, mm -hmm. I'm getting the sense that there might be something interesting that is present under the soil at this location. Are you looking for differences? Is that like a signpost? Looking for different colours, different angles and surfaces. I'm right. um, looking for um, the reflection of light on objects that don't look natural, like okay. you know, leaves and bark, things like that. So, so hmm. if we have a look at the ground, uh, I think I can actually see something over here. This red is not a colour we expect to see. It's not, is soil. it? So, um, How would you approach this? I know that um, we have caught you without your archaeological tools, so we're well, improvising. You, know, you, you make do with what you can okay. find at the time. So, but, um, I mean, look, it's a little red cylindrical thing. I mean, it could be part of a toy, it could be the handle of something. Do you want to just, like, brush a little bit of... Is that okay? I wasn't. Yeah, I didn't okay. want to disturb it. I'm not sure if it's like a crime scene. Because uh, is archaeology like the crime scene? You try not to touch anything with fingers? or you, Everything you touch is done scientifically okay. so just yeah just see if there's if if it how Ooh. far it might go down into the dirt it seems to be something that's interesting yeah. now i'm going to give you my improvised trowel and very gently scraping away from you away from me uh no towards you <laughs> towards me okay so i like can't to... do right and left either <laughs> so just oh now this is interesting i think Look what we've that. got emerging looks like have a I bottle. Have I scratched that there? Let's have a look here. What have we got? If you want to go in with your fingers and just brush, I can it looks do that. Like we can see some writing on that label now. This will be very interesting. It might tell us a date and then we know when this site was created. So it looks like that's definitely a wine label. It says Gibson. Oh, what language would that be in, do you think, Alice? Well, I mean, it's a very ancient script. Mm. It could have something to do with early German settlers in Australia, just possibly. And this but is, but they, they, were, they were speaking German. The Dirt Man. The Dirt Man. Is it? Mm. What's the protocol for me picking that up? You wouldn't do that, would you? Normally, would. Well, we don't know if it's entire yet. Or oh, can you see the base down there? I've seen. I've seen something. Let's just like remove a little bit more dirt. Look at, that. Look at this. It actually that seems looks a bit loose. Because we don't have all our equipment here, we won't measure it in. Normally okay. we'd take a GPS location. Right, so I could I could measure it. Look at this. Ah, oh, that's an excellent it's about a scale. A foot long, I would say. So uh, what foot size what size shoe would that be, Steve? Uh, that would be a size twelve or thirteen European shoe. Now I can tell you, if you look at the colour of that glass, mm -hmm. it's sort of a dark greenish black. Yes. This means that it's a mass-produced cheap bottle, <laughs> which generally beer or wine goes in, because that colour is derived from impurities in the glass. Oh. And it takes a lot, of, a lot more effort and it costs a lot more to make sure there are no impurities. So for beer and wine bottles, generally people don't that. go to that, to that effort. Um, I the thought Dirt you were... Man. The 2013. Dirt Man. Barossa Shiraz. Oh. How amazing. Um, I was hoping you'd tell me the significance of me having such big feet. Is there any significance to that in archaeological terms? Uh, not in archaeological terms, I... although I believe in some other terms that, um, <laughs> that people have um, imputed some significance. So this is quite a fine. So at the moment I'd be cataloguing this, wouldn't I? Yes, indeed you would. So we'd be recording the dimensions of the bottle. Mm -hmm. All of the details. Let's turn it over. See if there's any. Oh, we else haven't done that, that yet, have we? Let me hold the trowel. Oh, so oh. we have another label on the back. We have this very curious marking here, mm. which seems as if it might relate to a certain um, commercial system of the uh, early to late 21st century. Yes. And would you like to tip it up on the end? Let's see if it, this bottle is worn. First of all, well, we can immediately see this is not a hand-blown bottle. How do you know that? Because if it were, there would be a little mark there where the glass blowing rod was detached. Mm -hmm. So this is a mass-produced bottle. Mm -hmm. um, if it had been in use for a long time, we might expect to see a lot of scratches on this surface where Could it's been in touch with hard surfaces. Could this be from a period in civilization where these vessels were single-use? as opposed to being refilled all the time. Right? It's possible that this is the case. Mm -hmm. So this is already telling us many interesting things about this culture. 
Now, let's have a look at this closure on the bottle. Mm -hmm. There's a huge study of the way different bottles are sealed. Right. This looks like... A, oh, yes, yeah, so it doesn't... doesn't it come doesn't off like off. No. Um, as we know, um, a common closure for wine bottles mm -hmm. in the 20th century was corks, but this doesn't seem to be doesn't a cork. doesn't seem to be a cork, which would suggest a later development Indeed, perhaps? indeed. I think you're correct about that. Because pre-cork would be before single-use vessels as well. Mm. 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 I'm guessing. I'm very much popular level of archaeology, not proper. So shall we try? I often find if, it, if, I, could, if I don't pull successfully, I, I do a little twist. Shall I do a twist first? And Let's see? try a twist. Okay. Oh, ah, very interesting. Look at that. Will there be any ancient viruses in here that I need to be wary of? If you would you you'd never open a vessel on a dig, would you? Well, we'd certainly be careful because, okay. as I'm sure you're aware, there are some particularly um, little tiny microorganisms mm -hmm. that successfully manage to survive in space. So it's not impossible that some exist in any organic residues that remain inside the bottle. So let's be very carefully open, pointing it away from you. If there are any noxious fumes? I just pointed our, at Nigel. At the camera, our illustrious camera person yes. will get the benefit of these noxious you fumes. You can stare down the barrel, and he's still standing, so that must have been safe, or it's very slow acting. And uh, look, that was <laughs> um, Dr. Alice Gorman. <laughs> that was fascinating in discovering our SA drink of the week. I have one last question for you: How long does it take you to buy wine at the bottle shop? Because this took a long time to make this selection tonight. <laughs> well, it is very fortunate in this modern world we live in that bottle shops are indeed not filled to the ceiling with dirt, through which we are obliged to excavate to get to our tipple of choice. So, in general, I'm happy to report to you it is a much more rapid process than we have gone through tonight. Fantastic.